What's up, Nubians? Welcome to Tech Nubians. Oh, I forgot to say what's up to Nubian adjacent people. Welcome to Tech Nubians, part of the Geekish Network. This is your weekly deep dive into video games covered by blackness. I'm your host, Charles. And with me, we have Shanae. Hey, folks. Cherie. Hey, everyone. Ryan. And we have Travis. What it do? For those that don't know, Tech Nubians is your weekly video game live stream and podcast hosted by Black technology industry professionals, specifically in the video game industry. So we hope you learned something today. Uh, well, let's jump right into our news segment. I'll start with the first story, you know. Now, y'all didn't know this, every single Activision studio works on Call of Duty. <laughs> every single last one. Who, who, every didn't, single- who didn't know that? <laughs> Toys for Bob did Crash Bandicoot. They dropped Crash Bandicoot 4, which our lovely host and, and Geek Beast worked on uh, Summer summer okay. Punch. And yeah, now they work on Call of Duty Warzone. Wow. Everybody. Everybody. Those, those games are huge. They are huge. This one we talk, one thing we talk about all the time, right? Like you got like games like Call of Duty, your triple A five, average triple A they're game. Five, they're five A games. You should just call them five A. We know. You know, I about. use I call I usually go triple A is like you know thirty to up to a hundred million, and then like I call it quad A when you get over a hundred million, hundred million plus. But like these are way over hundred. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna have to start yeah. like creating yeah. new screen A. And stuff. I call it four A, four a game, four quad a, 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 yeah. It's just it's just a, a buttload of money, basically, it is. It is. <laughs> and a buttload of people. So like, you know, that's it. Shouldn't be right? surprising. Like those folks got to come from somewhere, and you know, Activision's got a lot of studios that they that they acquired, and it makes sense that like you know, you can either utilize your own talent that that you already have you know a good deal of control over. Or you bring in external folks and have to get them ramped up on your engines and everything. So yeah, let, let, let me talk about the studios that are on it. Toys for Bob now is working on Warzone season three content. Mm. Raven Software is support for studio for Call of Duty since 2010. Mm. Activision Shanghai works on Call of Duty Online. Demonware does server support for Call of Duty. Former Transformer Dev High High Moon Studios works on Call of Duty. B Knox has been working on Call of Duty since Black Ops 3. Mm. And collectively, Infinity Ward, Treyarch, and Sledgehammer trade off the development of the game every every two years now, right? And on top of that, King, they bought King, the mobile company, and they work on Call of Duty Mobile. Kings, oh, Kings working on mobile too? Yeah, Call of Duty Mobile. Every <laughs> single student, only student that's probably not working on a Call of Duty game is Blizzard. And they got something else to work on. Well, yeah, <laughs> they're working on Overwatch, which will be a Call of Duty game next year. <laughs> Overwatch Three will be a Call of Duty Overwatch. That's what they call I'm, it. I'm looking forward to the Call of Duty Candy Crush mashup. <laughs> yeah. well, don't put it past them; might happen. You, you, have, to, you, you never have know. To, I mean, with, what Activision has done mm-hmm. with 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 Call of Duty is 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 something that like not a lot of video game companies can can actually boast. And and so I'm sort of you know so I'm sort of sad and low key jealous at the same time, and what I mean by that is they've actually democratized like their number one, uh, you know, uh, product, and, uh, and and spread that competency throughout their organization in such a way where they can have a frontline annualized, uh, you know, quad A game come out. Every year, I mean, year. you know, usually that's reserved for usually that's reserved for sports titles, mm-hmm. right? Um, and what they've gotten, you know, activism has gotten into this into this cycle now, basically, where you've got really like three major studios that are really working on Call of Duties, and they just trade out and trade yep. out and trade out um, every three so, years. Yeah, and and so it it makes sense, um, but. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens when brand fatigue, uh, you know, really sets in. I don't yep. see it happening soon, but uh, what they uh, what they have done, uh, or, or what they are doing, is building this tremendous set of first person shooter competency across their organization. Absolutely, that is that yeah. that's great. That's critical. Like they are some yeah. of the best in the business and stuff as yeah. well. And, and you know, Travis made a comment about how you really don't see the sort of annualized titles coming at, at this scale coming out for anything except for sports titles. And even with a lot of the sports titles when we were working on them way back in the day, 
we alternated. We did feature years and graphics mm -hmm. years, right? So you yep. weren't doing like a like brand new like like new campaign, of the game. new story, new like you weren't doing that every single year because you just couldn't we, we couldn't support that yep. because that was more than a twelve month cycle. So we had to do this mm -hmm. sort of TikTok method in order to make sure. Yeah. And also, of course, you had to release an annualized version because ro rosters need to be updated yeah. every yeah. single yeah. year. Yeah, awesome. yeah. And also, Call of Duty games every year, they're different branded games. Like, mm -hmm. you know, one's like Future Warfare, one's always Past Warfare, and one's a mix of whatever it is they want it to be. Well, they, well, I mean, you can't stay in World War II forever. You can't, you can't. People be like, okay, how okay. many of these battles are there? You know, like, it's a, how many ghost battles? Five? How many black ops are there, though, I, too? I, I, yeah. think, I think we're never going to run out of Nazis. I mean, we, <laughs> you know, you can always disrupt it and just make them like zombies, you know? Like, they did, exactly. They did that too. <laughs> exactly. They do. You know, Vampires. You know, if, they, if, if, they, if they did make Call of Duty Nazi Punch, though, I would buy it. <laughs> but you know it's just a melee game but let's be yeah, honest you just, though just punch nazis the entire time <laughs> but, a slap fight <laughs> but let's think about the trade-off let's think about the trade-off that happens here right you have everybody working on call of duties we miss out on a lot of good software that these studios have made on their own right that that could utilize the call of duty engine like you care raven raven did uh star wars jedi knight Jedi Academy, uh, they Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Granted, they can't do Marvel anymore, but they did do it. Heretic. There's a lot of good games that they're not being able to work on or, or yeah. have creative or new IP by beating this horse until it dies. And it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's and it has a long easy, death. But, but, it has a long death. I'm, I'm I'm curious. I mean, do Call of Duty Mobile make more than Candy Crush? Mm. Like, you find that, that out. That's question. to add any, uh, you know, like, like query away from knowing. But it, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's look, um, Google, it's it's up there. Yeah, you know, it it is, and and I'm sure the juice justifies the squeeze. You know, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's I think it's real interesting. Like you said, you were like there's all these, these, all these other properties mm -hmm. that these studios are known for that are like you know, kind of been put on the back burner, or at least being put on hold. Like, our perception is being put on hold yeah. and stuff. But yeah. like I said, that's what, like, that's what these games like Call of Duty and like all the next, I say next gen, current gen, <laughs> that's what current gen experience takes. It yeah. takes like, like dozens of studios. It takes not even hundreds of people, thousands of people yeah. and not yeah. even millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, right? So yeah. if we want our experiences to keep like, you know, keeping up with the technology, which is really pushing the boundaries and we want these yeah. games to keep pushing the boundaries of that technology, it's just gonna like, it's it's just gonna get bigger and bigger and more unwieldy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, people, yeah. Well, I mean, it, 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 it takes a tremendous amount of coordination. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. enough of us are producers on this, uh, on this chat. Um, and it does, especially when you got people working on major parts of your your code that aren't around, <laughs> you know, the yes. 14, right? So it takes a tremendous amount of coordination and, and it's impressive actually to get that done. And actually um, everybody remembers when Bungie was really uh, plugged into that Activision, you know, uh, hive mind to, to a degree. Those people were working on Destiny too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that can open up to like if to, to talk about the positive stuff for it, like, hey, there's a lot of aspiring game developers that want to work on Call of Duty. Guess yep. you there don't are. have to move there just are. to California. You really yeah. don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got choices, y'all. Yeah, you, you, can, you can live, you can you can be in Baltimore, you can be in Florida. You can be in Shanghai. Yeah. Places, you can be in Shanghai. Everywhere yeah. where you are. Is Call King, of Duty. Yeah. Kings in Eastern Europe, right? Yep. King Sweden. Kings Sweden. Yep. Yep. So it, it yeah. lets you know that these games are really big and people what people don't realize is video games push technology, especially a visual medium of technology. Yeah. Like, you know, you got the Mandalorian sex because it's a game engine that they had to make it for video games that are coming. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, the reason you have the, the 2080 graphics card in your machine is not because you get to look at spreadsheets or write emails it's so you can play video games. Mm -hmm. But I, I I do I do absolutely love the 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 um, mm -hmm. the the thing that Travis mentioned a second ago about how it is spreading that knowledge that depth of knowledge of like mm -hmm. their first person shooter ex expertise because it is an expertise they are some of the best in the business at this yes they are there's, they are there's so much like intangibles and things that that you have to deliberately code into a game in order to make it feel good 
Like yeah. when you're when you're playing Destiny and you got your sniper rifle and like just the feel of the gun, like feels really really good. It feel it 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 is mm-hmm. a positive reaction. And that's not like we've all worked, we've all played games where we're just like, wow, this gun feels like a toy, <laughs> and yep. and or this yep. weapon doesn't feel have any weight to it, and that's uh that's because they don't like a lot of those teams don't have or understand like those sort of intangible things and those sort of like all the nuance and all the dialing it in. Yeah. And I sort of yeah. love the idea, you know. I love the idea that one of the benefits of all these different teams working on Call of Duty, which is like, you know, I think what they sell like 400 million copies, I think worldwide they just announced or something. Yeah. Yeah. I love the, I love the idea that that knowledge is now going to get sprinkled a little bit across the industry. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, ultimately when these other, um, when, when these, when we start getting new iterations of some of these other titles, we might see some of that, that influence. And yeah. people, what people don't understand is like, there's a lot of first person shooters and third person shooters and the really good ones, they all feel different. Mm-hmm. You know, I would never say Titanfall or Apex Legend even feel the same. They came out of the same studio. And they feel different. They both feel good. Overwatch feels good. And Call of Duty feels good. Even each year, a different studio, they those games feel different, but they all feel good. They do something right. They dial it into what they're making. Oh, yeah. I mean, like you can tell, like, you know, the movement model, like, is mm-hmm. drastically different in in, uh, in Call of Duty from, like, Destiny. Like, Destiny is very floaty. Yeah, it is very floaty. It's like I'm just gonna float for a while. Yeah, you know? I feel that way of Halo too. I feel like Halo, you're gliding, you're yeah. gliding in Halo. Yeah. In Call of Duty, I feel like I'm actually running. Like go, go. Yep. Even Gears of War, I feel like I'm actually running. Like oh, yeah. oh, oh. I feel like you've got like seventy thousand pounds on your, of like your armor on you. All your, yeah, on your back. And animations mm-hmm. and everything support that too. But yeah, yeah, that's um, I think it's I think it's gonna be really interesting to see what the downstream um you know Fact, like far like, cry all those games feel different yeah and, and i and i think it's probably important to, to to note that you know while every single studio at activision probably works on uh, on, on call of duty that's not the sum total of what they're doing but you know, that's not no yeah no. but it's 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 definitely you know um a, a major part of their business and uh yeah. you know like shanae said um that confidence he's got to pay off i mean you're training a lot of people how to make some top tier first person uh shooters and so um, that's going to pay off for years and years to come. You know, I tell you, right, if Call of Duty starts failing, they'll just branch off and make other shooters. Yeah. <laughs> why not? I mean, why not? I mean, why not? I mean, that's that's kind of how this works, right? Like, yep. it, it really does. I mean, people make uh, you know games for a long time. They they, they mm-hmm. build up that core competency, and then a few of those teams are like, I don't want to do that anymore, yeah. but I yeah. know how to do this really well. So. Yep. Let's uh, let's make a game where you know everybody's a mushroom with, with uh, big guns or something. Like yeah, that. Why not? call that plants versus zombies. No, it'd be a mushroom <laughs> kingdom. <laughs> Look at that attack! Look at that attack! Look at that! He's not gonna let y'all live. He gonna let nobody live. In this He's not gonna let anybody Same. live. Same. Good times. With that story, let's go to our next story. Who's up next? Who wants to go next? A uh, Shanae. Oh, sure, sure. I'll go. There's a so big yeah. story. If y'all have yeah. not been following the stuff going on with Basecamp, um, tell people what Basecamp is before we go in the story. So, Basecamp is a, there's a handful of like um, uh, really well known, like sort of industry standard um, product management and, and project management software. Basecamp's mm-hmm. one of those. Um, it allows mm-hmm. you to manage your teams, like communication, like task tracking, all that kind of stuff. So, like producer, <laughs> producer types like me, uh, and you can see people smile on the call. Like we 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 we've got some familiarity with Basecamp. So, um, Basecamp, as a company, has been going through uh, the changes this week because they made an announcement that, like, their, their founders made an announcement that they were no longer going to be allowing political discussion anywhere throughout the company. Now. Um, Basecamp itself, like I said, it is sort of a like a message board essentially. <laughs> it's a way that teams that c- can communicate with each other, and people use Basecamp like people internally use their own software, which is great. But they used it for like to have discussions about like creating the software. They use it for discussions about a wide variety of things, including DNI mm-hmm. initiatives. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a reason why. So let's link back to this 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 list of funny names that their customer service team had been keeping around for like 10 years. Like someone will find a funny customer name and just add it to the list, which, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, I think people suddenly realized in the last 12 months or so that the, that list could be somewhat racist or at least <laughs> deeply yeah. insensitive. Like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Erica, 
is not a racist country. <laughs> oh, I did hear that. I did hear that. Did like hear the, that. The know, black man said it, so you know. <laughs> well, so it's real. So, so we know it's not real because America doesn't trust black men, but it's not oh real. my goodness. But but yeah, so like a lot of this got like this the catalyst for all this was like this conversation around this this list of of this racist list of names that had been maintained. It had been maintained for humor, but obviously like why are you laughing at why are these people's names funny? Oh, because they're in other languages and that's just funny to us, right? Um, so that blew up and turned into, okay, fine, no political conversation at all at base camp. Well, as you can imagine, a lot of things get get coded as political. Being black gets coded as political. Talking about like, you know, uh, parental leave gets coded as political. So a lot of folks did not feel um, particularly uh, uh, protected, or represented <laughs> yeah. by that. And yeah. yesterday, apparently, after a very contentious all hands meeting, a third of the company said peace like we're not doing this they, they took a buyout essentially so oh wow wow just That's wow That's very so public heavy. here's like here's yeah. here's the thing <laughs> talk <laughs> about it talk about Look, it man um san francisco mm -hmm. the bay area <laughs> as a rule is the most politically charged like uh, area i've ever seen right, right? Like, i agree on market yeah. street people will write yeah. it uh, or, or people will demonstrate about cottage cheese, mm. you know, mm -hmm. it will. I mean, you know, you you say something bad about mm -hmm. cottage cheese, I dare you, right? And, and so- It's a little bit so, chunky. But, <laughs> so, um, just the wateriness of it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but what you have a lot of times, and in, in, I, you know, I say this all the time about employment, mm -hmm. like people don't, People don't do a job because they have to. They usually do a job because they want to. Right? Yep. And the level of skill that you need to cultivate and keep happy in in in, in the Bay Area or in technology, period. All right, is very dicey, man. Like, you know, these people will quit in a heartbeat. Right, because they can get a job in two seconds someplace. <laughs> yep. Don't even have to change the commute half the time. They really yeah. do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As a matter of like, fact, if people working from home, all they have to do is mail you your computer even back. That. Yeah, <laughs> even that. <laughs> all right. They're not they're not even paying to mail your computer back. You can no. pay for them to mail it back. Yeah, they'd be like, come get it. Yeah, basically. Right. And, Give and me so, your sleeve, I'll put it in there and I'll have them come pick it up. Yeah. And so it 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 always it always amazes me how corporations don't mm -hmm. seem to understand that being decent, okay, being inclusive <laughs> will pay you back every single time. Yeah. Trust me, it is a good investment all around. Don't, don't mess with smart people. They will get you. Yeah. Yes, yes. I think, I think that a lot of the problem is, I mean, a lot of, the com a lot of these companies in the Bay Area in particular, I mean, they they look at this from like you know a white centric focus right they're like oh don't talk politics but they don't realize like everything everything black is always politics <laughs> everything is politics period but anything that has to do with anything black is always politics and so mm -hmm. they look at it and they're like don't talk politics but they're basically saying like don't talk about anything with your experience how like you know being black affects you how you know don't talk about anything that's basically what they're saying is like yeah. they want you to deny yourself and just focus on their particular comfort right um and, and the other thing i think is interesting about this is like didn't base camp like didn't the, the like the founders really prided themselves on being opinionated they, they were pretty they were a pretty oh, little company yeah. they yeah. actually came out and said we make opinionated it, software it's interesting to me that they like they basically just blew out all up the, it's just gonna know? be the right like, this is like the this, <laughs> yeah this is like a, like the poster like child or like quintessential mm -hmm. i guess example of just white fragility here yeah. it is yeah. it is it is exactly why this country existed in the first place right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, think it, yeah. I think it also sort of hints towards this this thing we see with a lot of companies a lot of tech companies they're, mm -hmm. they're struggling with this right like you know america is a very complicated country yeah <laughs> that to say is the least constantly like trying to realize who it really is um constantly realizing what that, it really is but, but so many companies, like one of the one of the most common things I hear from a lot of really big tech companies that are trying to you know struggle with the idea of diversity and inclusion, like struggle how to be more diverse and more inclusive, mm -hmm. they'll say, bring your authentic self to work. Mm -hmm. We want you to bring your authentic yeah. self. 
Mm -hmm. And then when they see that your authentic self sometimes reacts to like the copious amount of police shootings or the fact that like, you know, um, various other places are on fire or like all this like violence and horrible stuff in the world. And like, wait, 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 not that authentic. Can you yeah. bring yourself that fits in this really comfortable little box? Yes, for me. Yeah, I wanted you to bring hear about you being a woman skills or and being like, black you know. or being LGBTQIA or anything related to me being disabled. Or can you can you just fit in this box? This box is comfortable. And actually, can you just not talk about anything? Actually, that makes me it's, uncomfortable. <laughs> actually, it's, is your it's, authentic self like yeah more it, bland? It, to me, to me, it's it's. And, and, and I and, and I see that this is going to be a problem for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's going to be a problem for quite some time because I think that our technology uh, and morality are traveling at two different speeds. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Um, sure. And 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 what we need to figure out this generation, or actually, it's probably the next generation is really going to figure this out. A few generations. It's, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It's America. Yeah, I mean, be we'll like... figure it out. I don't know whether or not they're going to, I, I think we'll probably figure it out now. The question is, will we solve it, right? It's, it's yes. like, you yeah. know, um, because people have always felt this way. People have always, uh, you know, expressed it, uh, you know, themselves this way. The problem is, is that the world hasn't ever really been uh, your, your stage like it is now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and so how do you, how do you deal with that? You know, because there's there's some people that, you know, when I was growing up, you, you could be lifelong friends with someone and not know that they're batshit crazy. Right? <laughs> yes. Now you know. And as now, an you, adult. now you know. You're like you still mm -hmm. believe Trump? Like it, seriously? Like yeah. And so that's 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 the deal now. And and, and it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I think um, as all these all these companies start to. Uh, you know, exercise uh, what bit of uh, freedom that they have as far as speech is concerned and, and how you're going to express that uh, in a medium now where, you know, people are talking to each other every day, much like we're doing right now, which we never even did when we were in the office. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Right? That's true. So, yeah, it's going to be, you know, this this is an exciting but frightening time to be, you know, alive. Yeah. For yeah, the first time in the world, we're truly one continent. Yeah, that's yeah. why. That's why it's I like called the internet. That's why I like Sony, because uh, Sony allows like its employees to wear like Black Lives Matter T-shirts in there. There's discussion groups about race. That, you know, uh, yep. they have them all the time. You know, yep. yeah. they're, 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 there's there's even um, transsexuals yep. that, that that work there. Which is, I, I think yep. Yeah, and I think um, the right term is transgender. By trans the way. Oh, yeah. Transgender is that? It? I, I, yeah. I, I have put it. Yeah, <laughs> you learned something new today. Correct, yeah. <laughs> but it's true. It's like Terminal Netflix. Changes, Netflix. Right? Netflix was the same way, where you could they had they they had groups for everything. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Netflix paid for uh, gender realignment and reassignment. They covered it. It's part of your benefit package. Yeah. It's like whatever it takes for you to be your authentic you. Yeah. The only thing they didn't pay for is your transracial uh, 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 assignment. You, you hear know, me, racial? Racial. No, no, transracial. My transracial. <laughs> I may want to be a 40 year old white man, and <laughs> not, Netflix not couldn't me. afford for that to happen. Look, I mean, you know, look, if you can give a white person a jerry curl. <laughs> they do have them. You That's saw Hall and Oates. Atlanta skit. You saw Hall and Oates. No, I think that was Sadly. natural. I think that was a. I think that was a Jufro. I don't think that was. <laughs> Uh, oats, oats. We saw yeah, that. We I, think this, I think I think a lot of the problems. A lot of these companies, they, they it is like yeah. this brave new world, right? That they and you know, I, I talk with folks about this all the time. If you ask like different people, different companies, whatever, whatever their values, they always list diversity as a value. Mm -hmm. You know, they always list it. But like, what does like what are you actually doing? You like, to kind of, like reinforce that, right? Like, where mm -hmm. are you actually putting your money, your time, your effort? Mm -hmm. uh, like, a lot of companies, I think it really is a big culture change. For them to go from like, you know, like you said, this comfort, right? Like prioritizing comfort, usually white mm -hmm. comfort, over like, you know, what? Let's look at what are the needs of the most marginalized in our com our company. Yeah, it's yeah. very difficult, a very difficult culture change there. And I mean, you know, you can see Basecamp decided. I feel like Basecamp like chose the wrong door. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be really interesting to see what their diversity numbers look like as if they release them. See, the diversity numbers look like after this whole thing clears because you know. 
uh, like 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 Sheree was saying, I, I you know I think the conventional wisdom has been uh, up until really recently, oh let's let's build these rules for our company or our organization or whatever, so that it benefits the most people. Yeah. Right. And when you always design for like the majority, guess who always gets punched in the face repeatedly? Oh, Anyone yeah. who's already oh. marginalized gets further marginalized. And the real, the real good knowledge, the real good logic there is actually designed for the folks who are most marginalized. And you're gonna get all the majority of everyone else as well. And you will actually also be able to help uplift folks who are marginalized so that they have you know, a voice in this stuff because yeah. I don't mean I don't I don't know what base camp's gonna look like if, uh, in a yeah. like six months or a year, but they had some really high level folks that just departed. I think it's like their head of marketing, head of design. Like it, it's it's gonna be real rough. Yeah. It's, it's a straight up Olivia Pope moment over there, right? Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like twenty people handle left. left. <laughs> it's handled. It's handled. Not actually handled right now. <laughs> and they gonna have to pay her extra. Well, I, I hope. I hope. I hope Silicon Valley takes this as a lesson. Yeah. hope they learn something from this yeah. and they they move in the right direction because snapchat also had they did their diversity report and they realized wow we're whiter than we were last year <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know that we didn't know and now they know i, I also think this whole thing is a, is sort of a result of separating diversity and inclusive inclusion initiatives from your company's actual like business culture. initiatives yeah yeah yes. you're from its yes. culture and its business initiatives yeah because yes. then you can be like actually diversity inclusion we don't need that but if it was actually tied in like the way that it yes. should be like it should be lockstep it should be horizontals not verticals then you wouldn't just be able to be like eh, no political talk y'all no <laughs> <laughs> just, just hang a whites only <laughs> sign on the door let's go let's get to some more positive news sheree you got something for me that's positive Hopefully positive. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about um, Riot. So they made a change to their privacy policy recently. Um, and this was, the, the, the change is going to basically allow them to record clips for Valorant, like the in-game voice communication. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the idea for this is they said they want to, they want to um, uh, uh, give, they want to have more tools to be able to like evaluate and moderate like toxic behavior that you might hear in the mm -hmm. game. Um, so I think this is kind of interesting. Sony apparently did like the same thing like last year, but they didn't announce it. Mm. And so there was a whole lot of, there was like a backlash when players, you know, read about it or saw it in the privacy policy. So Riot's being very upfront about it. They're like, yo, we're changing the privacy policy. You know, we want to let people know this is what we're thinking about with it. We are still protecting people's privacy. We're not just going to be sitting there listening to your voice chat at all times. We, but we do want to be able to like, be, uh, you know, better evaluate reports about like disruptive behavior and i think this is really interesting because like you know we, we talked before uh, a few weeks back i think about like um intel where they're creating like that that new tech called bleep you know mm -hmm. where they're like oh you know you can choose like with a slider how much <laughs> racism <laughs> or whatever you want in the game you know and it's well, like that should just be a switch yes, yeah, right. exactly. like a third less n word today <laughs> yeah and like for for them they're kind of like putting that wholly on like the player like what experience are you going to have and you have to moderate it i think it's interesting that riot's like you know what you know we want to be able to try and make this as a better a better community mm -hmm. You know, anyone who is like from marginalized group who's played online with like strangers, you know, <laughs> like, you know, sometimes the experience is not a pleasant one. I say sometimes. Um, so I, I just thought that was interesting. I wanted to see what other folks thought about this, uh, this change here for Riot. It's only for Valorant right, right, right now, but, um, you know, it could potentially roll out to other, other titles. I, I, well, this is something I feel like you got to opt into, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and I say that because... Uh, for, for example, I mean, I played Destiny, for example, with a lot of my cousins. And if 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 you're not black, I don't know if you want to be on the voice chat uh, <laughs> there, um, right? Um, there's got to be a, a a lot of machine learning <laughs> that's going to go part and parcel with this. You know, it's 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 dicey, right? I mean, I guess. Um, you know, this is this is where technology once again tries to you know see if can I insert some morality in this technology? Like you know, how many n words are acceptable before you know in in, in a public space before you say okay, you can't log on anymore? I mean, it's a it's a it's a big deal. It's 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 valiant, 
It's a valiant effort, and I think it should be done. I think, you know, it's the- actually a Valorant effort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that! Oh, what it. you did there? Oh, I mm-hmm. see what you did. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but you know, I honestly, with y'all. honestly, I, I mean, I, I think the first time I saw something like this was actually in two K game, right? It was the NBA two K. Um, like someone uh, released this video where they started swearing and the game like penalized them for it. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And then they were like, what the F? And the game penalized them again. The you know, and I was like, wow. But right? It wasn't recording in that case though, right? Was it just voice? Was it just no, he was uh, logged on. Oh. Right? And, and the game was listening to him. You can still find it on YouTube, I think. And, and and he just and and he's just swearing in the games like penalizing them for swearing and I'm like yo that's out of control that's very meta that's interesting but I will say for this yeah. um like they they've said that they're not gonna be doing like passive listening for games so I don't think there's I don't know if there's mm-hmm. any like machine learning for this yet it's just yeah. it sounds yeah. like there has to be like a report from somebody of like you know bad player behavior and then they might go do some recording or something I don't know. But then it's gone. Like how? Like I guess it depends on how quick they are to actually jump into and like let's listen to this particular conversation. Is it? Are they? Is it still going? Yeah, I don't know. Be like a virtual Samuel Jackson. Say it again. Say it again. (laughs) (laughs) Or maybe they're like supposedly I'm doing passive listening, but maybe it's like one of those things where like you know body cams like record the thirty seconds before. You know, once you activate it, we're like, oh, yeah, well, now I'm going to, like, turn on and actually keep this. Yeah, they may, they so may keep it like for that. a small amount of time, probably give, yeah. give a week. Give so, you know, week. you get so, you know, for anything that, that is criminal, they can always capture it. So they hold, might hold it, hold it for seven days, then let it go. Did, yeah. did, anyone, uh, move. Go did ahead. anyone play Paradise City, that Burnout Paradise City? Yes, I love Bur- Burnout Paradise City. I, I don't know if you've ever done this, um, but there was this option when you're going head to head with someone and when you wreck them, it would actually snap a picture as well. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> so you could see that person's <laughs> expression when you Wait, that picture yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 That's, cool. that's kind of cool. <laughs> you opt into that. Yeah. 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 It was, I agree. Know. I so, love yeah, that. So, yeah. So I think this could be used to, you know, well, but it's it's it, it it seems a little Orwellian, and you know, as soon as you give people this type of power, all the brakes come off. Well, you yeah. know, here here's the thing. Here's here's I mean, I absolutely think this could be an incremental step. On like you said, sure, incrementalism. This could be a slippery slope. Everything be a slippery slope, right? Mm-hmm. But right now, like the online gaming experience has not improved significantly <laughs> in a real long time. Like, like never. I, yeah, I had to improve my own online gaming experience by saying, I'm just not going to play with people I don't know. Like, I don't play with randos because when you play with randos, I get the exact same experience I had 10, 15 years ago, which is mm-hmm. stream first words, stream of slurs, stream of whatever, people disconnecting. Like, it's like the, the, this is this, this overarching motif. And I even saw it in the, in the, I think the press release um, for this, where mm-hmm. we say, we want to make a community that is safe, inclusive for everyone. See, it's like, well, well, it's like, is it really for everyone? Because here's the thing: when you allow abusers, you cannot you cannot create a space that's 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 both safe for abusers and for victims. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. and so I know it might be like slight, like just nuance sort of thing, but it's true because right now, like there's a there's so much space for abusers on the mm-hmm. online spaces like do I'm we like, really want a place safe for abusers yeah, i want abusers really scared want to, to death yeah. of to being abusers <laughs> well I, you know i i think what we're describing and i've said this several times and I, you know i don't know why i just don't go off into the sunset and do something <laughs> Question it. <laughs> why don't you just go off in the sunset? Go off in the sunset, um, Travis. No, no, I want to hear this. But, go for it. <laughs> but I, I, I really think that uh, a, a Yelp for gamers uh, is, is, is something that needs to be done. Like some seal of approval that, that you know, you're not a jerk, right? That, that within a certain gaming space, you you're you're someone who you can you know who's happy to help 
or, or, or could lead you through things or, or, or do various things, you see, because I think a lot of times people use the internet and that anonymity to be a, a, a jerk. Um, but I think that um, if, if you actually rewarded them um, for it, uh, for, for being decent, that it would, I, I think it would really start some sort of counter jerk revolution. I really think so. And it's because I, I do. And, 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 and you know, I just love funny. the name counter jerk revolution. I feel like it's a, great, <laughs> a great band name and I feel like it's a great program name. A cover band. Because, you know. because if, you, if, if you think about it, I mean, everybody's got at least one, maybe, at least one cool person that they met in a game, probably, that they've never met in person, mm -hmm. but, you know, are decent people, right? Mm -hmm. At least one. Right. And for everyone, though, I, I know, I know. But what I'm what I'm saying, though, is, is that if you if, if, if someone if you're playing a game and you need help, like you know, like before, when I was telling you, like, I want to play Outriders, but not enough people that I know are playing it right now. Right. But if I got on Outriders and I looked across the people who I could group up with and these Yelp people were like, this person's friendly, this person will help you level, this person will do this mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. I could go make some friends. You yeah. see what I'm saying? And I and, and I think a lot of games could benefit from having that social glue. Uh, yeah. you know, because right now you 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 really don't know. It's sort of a coin toss. No, I mean I, I don't disagree with you on it. I think it's a I know it's a, and I don't want it at all deeming the, the, the platform holders and stuff. I know that these are, uh, and anyone who's running an online game, these are really complex problems and stuff. I'm sure that some of this stuff is in some degrees of like being tried out. Um, Cause my, my corollary to your idea, Travis, is awesome. Like we've got the fours and the fives, all oh, the ones and the twos, banned. <laughs> <laughs> Or just or but what was but, the name of that company, Sinead, that, that that actually had that technology that basically just sent the griefers to their own area? I think, it's Xbox, actually, I think Xbox does that. As yeah, well. they were like, if you want to be a douche, just be a douche over uh, here. But, but that, then that's where APB the did it too. Episode that I, I I saw a bit as well. But no, I think Rockstar I think, does it too as well. Yeah, that's cool. I think, there's a, I think it's a pretty common thing for a lot of games to um like as as folks get reported and 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 be uh sort of classified into this space, you, they all get banished to the cornfield. So they can still play, but all the jerks wind up playing the game with other jerks, essentially. So they're yeah. all mm -hmm. in the cornfield. My, my, my sort of counter argument is like, why do we provide that cornfield still? <laughs> Because like people, because the like, companies want their money too. Capitalism, exactly. Yeah. Capitalism. capitalism. Exactly. And that's I mean, whole point of capitalism I, I think is when you're a griefer, mm -hmm. I, I, I think sometimes you're just really over competitive. And I, and, and I don't, you know, and, and I think that there's, there's a tipping point where you become too toxic, right? But I think that a lot of times people who exhibit those behaviors are probably kids. Right. And I don't think that they deserve mm -hmm. to be kicked off the, you know, the, 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 the landscape forever, but, uh, you know, yeah, putting, putting some brakes on them. is not a bad idea. I, 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 I think some of them are kids, but I have experienced an awful lot <laughs> of 35 year old kids, kids, <laughs> kids. 35, 35 year old, year old kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, when I hopped on Xbox uh, live for the first time, I was the saint of griefers. I used to grief people all the time. See, I'm notoriously known. I was notoriously known to greet people. See, the game he's living friends. amongst us, and we didn't. Yeah. Even know. You, man. I'm not okay, that person you know. anymore, but I was just saying the griefers. You know, <laughs> how about, I mean, how about I'm, we don't we don't ban you? You can only, but you can only play like games that are in beta. Like you, know, <laughs> you, can only you know, Lego uh, I, 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 I remember <laughs> like like we'll play Lego, and you know, people are trying to hop on a on the block, and I just push them off of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. See, honestly, over over I, I think there's a lot of the reason why Nintendo like often is like they're so hesitant to allow any kind of voice chat in any of their games. Mm -hmm. They're like, you communicate with a plus control pad. Mm -hmm. You press up if you want to say thanks, left if you want to say help. That's it. That's, it. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's yeah. true. You know, yeah. like 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 I wouldn't communicate with people. Like I remember Left for Dead, they kept this this crew of guys, they kept they kept making me bait. So they would kill me and let all the zombies attack me. Then they'd kill all the zombies around me. And so I kept playing with them. They're like, he hasn't quit yet. And I'm not saying anything. When we get to the ship, I shoot them right before we get on the ship. So that it was the end credits. 
terrible. And I'm the only one on the ship. Terrible. So I'm running straight I'm to the only one who plays games to actually enjoy myself. <laughs> like, I'm like, what they enjoy though. That's the crazy part. <laughs> no. it's, it's it's like, oh, y'all oh, gonna agree? Y'all, listen to listen to y'all, him. y'all gonna troll me the whole entire game. I'm not gonna quit. I'm not gonna ride this out with you guys. Wait till we get to the wait till the chopper comes. Then so like, go, to the chopper. Chopper. go to the chopper. They came. I just I lit the dock on fire and I shot shot them and they sat there and died. They were so mad. So it is a very complicated, very complicated. It's problem. complicated relationship. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of complicated, complicated people. It's a complicated involved. relationship. You know. <laughs> oh man, uh, that's that's interesting. You know? Let's, like, I okay. want to see how this Valorant thing, like, I want to see how that how So goes. I wouldn't say anything, though. I was just saying a grief first, because I feel like I was, I came out of hell, and I just come and just grief people. I don't have to say anything. <laughs> so I just push you to the edge of the world. You try to get something, I won't let you get it, and I'll get it. This like, is I why I only play games with people I know. <laughs> you know? It was fun doing so it. So that when you do that, she can slap fire from you. When exactly. She's I'll be like, Travis, <laughs> I'll be on the phone with you. I'm like, I'm going to phone over here. I'm like, Travis. I'm, you Charles, I'm about to kill man. Charles right <laughs> now. I'm about to kill Charles right now. <laughs> You know, uh, I keep trying to get the turkey in, in this game to get my health up, and Charles just snatches it. He has full health. He has full health the whole entire time. You <laughs> know, goes, mm, that turkey's played. good. <laughs> Stop this mess so we can go ahead and finish this level. But that, that's what I would do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next well, news, that. Travis, you got good news for you, you know? Cause, I don't you know, know if it's good, it's good I mean, news. I mean, me. I, mean you, I don't know if they're cutting you a check or not. You know, this is back before uh, games had screens. So, uh, <laughs> so the world of Vampire, uh, the Masquerade, uh-huh. is being developed for film and TV. Um, so Variety reports that Shadow and Bone, Eric Iserer, mm-hmm. and the Punishers, uh, Christine Boylan, have been tapped by Paradox Interactive uh, to make. Um, you know, they're the video game publishers and and also the intellectual uh, property holders for uh, World of Darkness. Um, and so um, it's actually um, being uh, being developed uh, by the same people who uh, put The Witcher on Netflix uh, that did the uh, Expanse uh, as, as well. Um, and um, the, it's crazy. <laughs> 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 it's crazy, man. Vampire the Masquerade. Travis, do you want you want you want to tell the people um why you're so excited about this particular thing? Who are you to Vampire the Masquerade? Hmm? Who are you to Vampire? Masquerade. I am I'm one of the Vampire. I'm I'm well Vampire the Masquerade is part of, like I said, a um a shared world intellectual property called the World of Darkness. I was one of the World of Darkness uh, creators. Um, and, um, sounds racist to me. It was, <laughs> we, we, we did this, we did this 30, 30 years ago. Um, so yeah. So White Wolf's World of Darkness, it, it, it really started with uh, Vampire the Masquerade, which was, mm-hmm. you know, a tabletop RPG. Um, but instead of playing like people who fight the monsters, you were actually the monsters. Okay. Um, and, um, it's it's funny because in the in, in a release they had this quote and and I think it's 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 interesting to to quote it says the world of darkness uh, uh, story universe is deliberately and unapologetically inclusive and diverse um, and it's always made a point of including equally gendered characters protagonists antagonists of every race representation of all creeds bringing female and diverse uh, audience to gaming like nothing prior. Uh, the games and fandom are a place where women, people of color, and the LGBTQI community can feel welcome, and we're very proud to bring those stories to life. So, um, this is something this is something I'm pretty proud of, and mm-hmm. you know, and and I'm I'm proud of it because um, this this wasn't pandering. Yeah, you have to understand, like White Wolf was a collection of every single one of those things. And, and I think the reason why we stand the test of time is because we wretched few <laughs> decided that we were gonna do something different. And the thing that makes me, and I get a little emotional about it, was um, how many women actually came up to us and said that they appreciated the fact that we used her and she 
in a neutral, uh, you know, in, 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 a very, in, in a very neutral setting. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when we gave examples, we would say she did this and, you know, and her and so on and so forth. And that was deliberate. That was deliberate because we had some very, very strong women at that company. Right. And I was I was the militant black person. We had, you know, transgender people. We had gay people at, at that company. We had Christians in that company. We had pagans in that company. You see what I'm saying? Like you had to bring your weird car to get in. Uh, at, at White Wolf, right? If you were, if, if you were just like the, you know, the straight laced, like, you know, uh, waspy, you know, no, like, you know, because, you know, everybody's Why is that got weird? That. We, 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 I we, think we being waspy is weird. <laughs> you know, and, and so, well, the, the, the thing about it was, it's like, what we really tried to do is we tried to build a whole world where uh -huh. the supernatural was real. But if you're gonna build a world where the supernatural is, is, is real, you can't not include women. You can't not include, mm. uh, you know, different ethnic backgrounds and, you know, because all magic doesn't come from Europe, you know, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 so, and, and, and so for me, um, you know, having to sit through like, you know, uh, people who tried to do this yeah. before, mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, like when people take a look at, uh, help me out, um, the Natasha Henstridge uh, vampire movie. Uh, oh, uh, are you talking about, oh my goodness. I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember the name of it right now. Come on, Kevin, Kevin, help me. Kevin Grievous did it? Yeah. What, what was it? Mars, maybe? No. <laughs> no. It was a species. Oh, it's not helping me. It's not helping me right now. Yeah. It, in, in any case, it was like a it, it was like a half step into that, you know, like vampires and werewolves and and all that other kinds of stuff. And I believe it was like underworld, like, underworld, underworld. Yeah. Underworld. After yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Underworld. Yeah. Underworld. Yeah. underworld. And, and, and so, we're like, oh, underworld. Yeah. And, and, and so <laughs> my sister for a second. That that had a lot of shades of what the world of darkness was like. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um and. You know, I'm a I'm a fan of Witcher. I love the Expanse, and of course, I love the intellectual property that I, I helped create. And so, I just I just hope and pray that they get it right, right? Yeah. Because you know, because people don't understand. Like that's why I have such a visceral response to 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 vampires done. Like you know, because in in our in in our game world like the original vampire was Cain, the original murderer, right? Mm -hmm. And and so yeah. things sort of flowed from that from that. And yeah, I mean, I'm excited about it. You yeah. know, because um uh, you know, now I feel sort of like those Marvel creators, you know, who say, well, oh, you know, I made this character and I didn't get any credit and all this, you know, I'm just happy to see it happen. Mm. I'm I'm excited whenever we can have like like you said, like a fantasy world, sci-fi world, whatever. Where like that doesn't pretend that like black people and other people of color don't exist because that's way outside the realm of believability. Yeah, you know, like, it's it, it, Shereen, what what was you know, and, and we talked about this uh, you know somewhat before, but you know how how your how how things that you create can sort of you know hop the tracks to to some degree, right? Mm -hmm. um, in 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 particular, like there was a there was a particular type of vampire. Um, mm -hmm that when we created them, they were called the Yasamites. And uh, now they're called the Banu Akim or, or, or something of that nature. And, um, you know, we're, we're just brainstorming, like, you know, wh how these vampires are unique and so on and so forth. And, and, and someone says, you know, yeah, you know, cause vampires, you know, when they get older, they get pale and they get all this other kinds of stuff. And me in my militant blackness said, how about they get darker as they get older? How about that, right? Like, let's have some really black vampires. And there really wasn't much else thought behind that, except I don't want to see more white vampires. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and so, you know, it, it, it was just recently where I read this article where, you know, like I'm being racially insensitive because the vampires get blacker and I'm like, do you even know that a black man said that? Like, uh, you know, I mm -hmm. I, I hate people sometimes. 
<laughs> sometimes, just sometimes. Can you teach me the sometimes hating people? Oh, well, just, <laughs> no. um, but yeah, uh-huh. yeah, no, I'm I'm just excited for it. I see that there's a lot of like uh-huh. these kind of properties that are kind of being picked up. You know, Witcher did like it was huge, of course, for uh-huh. Netflix. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm I'm excited kind of to see something like I said, something that's like a fantasy thing, but that also like allows like different people from different intersections. It's like that actually like validates and pretends that we exist. I think that that's always, you know, I think it's always a plus. I, yeah. I I'm I'm here for it. Just pray for me. Just just mm-hmm. just 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 pray. Just yeah like, if like, the vampires suck and i'm gonna blame travis it, it, yeah, it's your fault yeah we're gonna talk to you about that travis just so you know yeah like everybody man, they, send they, your they, they had a, letters they had, black, they had a vampire so black you couldn't see him on screen like a shadow <laughs> I'm like that's travis's fault like it really is <laughs> uh, what else ryan, we got ryan you got some epic news for us don't you oh yeah so um epic i like epic news um <laughs> so uh epic games uh which i just found out is on a uh, 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 10 cent owns a percentage of it um which is kind of crazy i didn't know that but uh they're the makers of fortnite and the unreal engine and for those who don't know what unreal is it's a it's a game engine that's used all throughout the industry that you can make really cool games on and the cool thing about it is free um, um, but they, they bought the, the, the art sharing, uh, platform art station, um, which is kind of cool for me a little bit, I guess. Well, I, I like, I like art station. I've been using it for a while. Uh, I, I, I just need to go update my page, <laughs> update my page in a while, but, uh-huh. but, uh, but yeah, man, it's, um, it's, uh, art, art, art station. It's uh, the real cool, real cool thing about it. You know, you can share your art uh, on there, and and you can also sell a whole bunch of uh, uh, things like tutorials and all kinds of crazy mm-hmm. stuff like that that you can put out on there. So, so, so to me, when I hear when I heard that news, it was just kind of sound like okay, well, it sounds like you know what AT and T was doing, going around just buying everything. Um, you know, here here they are. They you know. Um, <laughs> These massive companies are just consuming everything. <laughs> they are. That's yeah, sort of driving me crazy a little bit. <laughs> but 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 I'm now wondering what's going to change about it. But the one the one thing I know that 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 um that that is going to change is that uh, because of the acquisition, uh, the whole library where you can learn all kinds of stuff, uh, it's going to be free for a year, so you can go awesome. in and you know. Mm-hmm. You can learn a bunch of stuff, and you know, black folks, we, we like free. So, you know, <laughs> jump on it, y'all. Jump on it. Get in there. Price I can afford. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I can afford. Get it because it's free. So take take advantage. There's something else that I I I like to tell people. Um, when you have an opportunity in front of you, take full advantage of it now because opportunities don't come by that that, that often, and you have a full year to learn something. And if a year goes by and you haven't learned anything, then you're going to be looking back and say, I just wasted a whole year. I could have done something for free. I could learn this for free. And I just wasted a whole year. I might have got our station and learned Get some on stuff there, for man. free. Right? Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I think it's interesting because I think that, you know, like Epic's just been making some moves lately. Yeah, they took their $200 million Sony check and bought Art Station, apparently. Did you know, between Art Station, between, you know, they picked up the Trilateral and all those folks that Cubic and looked at the other day. They, they put man. out the meta human creator that I'm seeing all my friends. A lot of my friends aren't even tech, like they're not tech people, but they're all messing around with this and they're like, look, I Rumor created myself. Is- 30 minutes they're picking up the people that actually made the iphones front-end camera Mm. they're gonna pick them up to come work for them i think i I think what epic is 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 doing honestly making the metaverse showing us how serious they are about the metaverse first 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 (laughs) first first, first, yeah yeah they are serious about it (laughs) also (laughs) something hey hey, ryan if you didn't know also for art station they picked up art station and they used to take 30 percent of the fees oh yeah i remember and now they take 12 they're like no we're going to cut the fees we're going to give more to the 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 creators we're going to take 12 percent wild by the way (laughs) capitalist society be like "Eh, you know what we're going to take less money money. i'm like (laughs) 
wow, capitalism really has things. So well, like, I, well, well, I think it, when you when you charge less money, I bet you end up making more money. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah. more artists are coming. You it up to more people, actually. You know what I'm saying? Well, people well, are like, well, like, well, like, well, seriously, well, like, well, seriously, well, like, consider like how many people actually have like a legal copy of Photoshop now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's true. Yes, because it's cheaper. Yep. 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 And not only that, everybody be like, "Yo, man, you got that Photoshop?" <laughs> Like in college, we had that. Like, <laughs> Ryan's laughing because it's like eight thousand yeah. like, hey, yeah. dollars. Wait a minute. Well, you needed Photoshop. You needed, you know, three DS Max. You needed Unreal. You needed mm-hmm. like Illustrator. You know, all these things that were like you needed to have experience in them already. And it's like these things cost thousands of dollars. And I hear I'm a college student. Yeah. How do you go get them? So yep, I love yep. the fact that there are free versions of all of these yeah. things now that yeah. allow people to build expertise. You just gotta find the yeah. time. Uh, One thing or, that or it's as reasonable as a is a happy meal, you know, a month yeah. basically. Yeah. Actually, That's basically it. Because like, yeah, because what it does is it, it 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 gives it gives these people who might be talented but not, you know, like rich, yeah. an opportunity to become so, right? Mm-hmm. In this new in, in, in this new digital landscape. I think it's a win all around. Yeah. It's starting to level the player playing field a bit. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's one thing. One thing that we should learn is McDonald's nor Walmart are complaining about making money by dropping prices. You know, (laughs) (laughs) they make more money the more they drop prices. Yep. Because now you and have I, dollar menu errors everywhere. That's right. Dollar, <laughs> you know, McDonald's invented the dollar menu. Mm-hmm. Like, well, it's like, do they want? Yeah. Do they? Do they want you? Do they, do they, do they want $10 every week or, you know, or, or $5 every day? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know. exactly what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah. it's true. It's true. McDonald's yeah. is not a treat. It becomes a necessity at that point. Exactly. Yeah, and, and the result <laughs> is like the industry just gets better, right? Because yeah, it does get better. Who are like coming into the industry with a, a baseline of knowledge and a baseline of like mm-hmm. expertise. And you mm-hmm. aren't always having to like either, you know, learn on the job or beg a company that we will even hire you with you if you don't have that expertise already because there was exactly. that was one of the things that was so challenging when it's so hard to get in the video game industry like 10 15 20 years ago because you had to already have expertise in things that cost hundreds of dollars mm. before they would even look at your resume or look at your <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes. I remember downloading yes. like that copy of photoshop on BitTorrent being like it's an evaluational copy it's a student copy yeah. Like, yeah copy here's the here's the crack key there's just a key yeah. on it i don't know <laughs> And, you know, then and, they make and, so much money, it's ridiculous. I don't even think about my subscription. It's funny, Sheree, yeah, right? you don't look like a Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> and now every single month I get that little like, you know, $9.99 charge for Photoshop. And I'll be like, man, I didn't even use Photoshop the last three months. They got $30 out of me. They got $30 yep. out of yeah. me every month. Oh. I'm like, man, I haven't opened up that in a while. Mm-hmm. These you subscriptions. I, I finally had to months. cancel my Clip Studio because I was like, I have not used Clip Studio. And <laughs> Listen to Ryan. Man. Listen to Ryan. Ryan's like, yeah, I just, first, I'm using first, first the right name. Ryan. Me. R- yeah, Ryan, Ryan just got triggered. He got triggered. <laughs> now. How dare y'all not use our program? I, I use, um, I use Medibang Paints on my iPad mm. right now, and yeah. Photoshop. I'm trying to get my license for my, my work license now. <laughs> okay, okay. That's the way well, with to get that. With that, let's let's you know we spent a lot of time on news. We had a really good conversation. I want to see what Ryan's drawn before we leave here, because right. you know. Be real quick. I don't know if this is a light. We oh, can't see. No, 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 man, Every come on. Bring it closer to your man. face, man. Bring it closer to your face. There you go. Like, what's, what's my like, face right now? Oh, we can't see. Yeah, it, the there, oh, there, we go. there it is. There it is. There it is. Oh, Luke wow. Cage. I'm drawing Luke Cage right now. Nice. Luke nice. Cage. You're inking now, right? Yes. I I drew it and now I'm inking it. Oh, so you drew it now you're tracing it. Now I'm tracing it. How long will the inking process be? Now he's adding the dynamic. Um, inks and everything with this pen <laughs> he's about, actually inking it like a real inker yep about how long do you think it'll take to ink that piece um probably uh two and a half hours <laughs> wow is, wow like wow what if you make a mistake while you're inking it how do you redo it i have white ink. what's up i have white ink okay <laughs> 
Wow. Okay, why eat? Right there. Okay. okay, I just wanted to know because I'm just, I've just i never done this before. I'm like, do you redraw the whole entire thing? Hope you photo. I had an art teacher who told me there are no mistakes in ink. You just have to figure out how to make it work in the piece. It is here's, a, here's a question That's for you, Ryan. Not- like, honestly, like, is is it what's your what's your preferred medium? You and Cherie, like, it, like. You know, I, I know it, it, it probably feels good to like write on, you know, to, to do it on, you know, traditional stuff, but, um, you know, do you, do you find that a little bit more limiting? Um, it depends on your, your final output. Um, usually like these pieces I'm working on, they're, they're actual commission. So someone around the world is going to own this. Um, so, but will they own the NFT version though? <laughs> <laughs> or are you going to own the NFT? Well, I already you got, I already NFT. got the email from uh, DC that says that I can't, well, tell them, tell them that's Luke Cage. So, <laughs> <That's me. Marvel. laughs> so it, honestly, it depends on your, your final output, but, um, there are benefits and negatives on, for, on both sides. Yeah. Um, yeah, there it really depends on what you're trying to do. You typically, when you're working in industry, you're going to see, you're, you're going to stick with uh, digital art, you know, any form, any platform, pretty much any platform, I'm sorry, but the, the universal one is Photoshop. Um, but then at the same time, if you don't, if you neglect pencil and paper, these tangible uh, objects that's out there, that, that, that the, the hand to, 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 to uh, paper to type of feeling. If you neglect that, you're okay. you're actually putting aside a certain portion of your your learning curve. Um, you can you can paint up on Photoshop and you can have have this beautiful digital art and everything looks great. And you can, but the, the 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 actual process of getting there is completely different from from this. If you make a mistake here, you pretty much have to live with it. Or find a way to figure it out. How, how, how can I fix this with the with uh, my brush pens or, or and my erasers or something like that? Or it'll probably just toss it aside and start all over again. Uh, but if you mess up in Photoshop, yeah, it's just an eraser tool. You have a history. Control Z. You, you can you can go hue saturation. You can do all kinds of stuff. You know, so you can run you can run a filter on something and just blur something out of whatever. You know. Um, yeah. you know, um, so, and, and you can cheat, you can import pictures, real pictures into Photoshop and use that as a, as a base. And that's not that. cheating. That's just, that's just working smart. <laughs> right <laughs> there. <laughs> Cherie, Cherie was triggered. Cherie, which do you prefer? Cause no, you do I'm, watercolors too. Which oh is, gosh. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing a lot of watercolor right now, but like, it's a lot of like what Ryan said, like, so, cause watercolor, you have to do a lot of planning. Like that's one of the things that like drives me crazy about watercolor because I like to get in there. Like I like charcoal and like pastel and, and things where I can kind of get my hands in there and just be like, let me start like making a vague shape of something and eventually get it to look like what I want it to look like. Watercolor is kind of like, no, you didn't plan ahead of time. Sorry. Yeah. If you can fix you, if we want to fix this in post, it's gonna be digital. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, that's that's the thing that's tricky for me for watercolor is like having to do a lot of planning ahead of time for it. My preference though is like I said, I love using like medium where I can get my hands in it, you know? So like charcoal, pastel. I do love using like like pen and ink as well because like if you do make a mistake, it is fun trying to sometimes figure it out as long as it's not a commission. It's fun <laughs> trying to figure out how to solve it. If it's, and I, the one other thing I will mention is when I try and do commissions, I do lots of times, I do prefer to use like digital for it because you know, lots of times people don't like actually know what they want and they might ask you to change stuff and like, it's so much easier to like change things, you know, digitally versus yeah. having to like change it, like trying to go back in and be like, hey, I can't do this. Sorry. Like, you know, I'm not going to redo 20 hours of work or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. Well, I mean, I, you know, as, as a matter of fact, I, you know, next week I, I, I was trying to look for it, but I can't find it. Really you show something you're drawing now? Well, no, I, I wanted to show people like uh, Your the, NFT? The, the commission. No, the commission that uh, Cherie did for me and my and, and my lady, which I think is 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 just breathtaking. Like I, I, I knew she was good. 
I just didn't know she was that damn good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I'm, I'm you know, because, she, you know, Sheree would show us like, you know, things that she's working in her, you know, her, her art class and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, I didn't know she was that good. Like, you know, and, and then, mm -hmm. and she was like, hey, I'm doing commissions. And I said, oh no, I gotta, I gotta work this out. And it was, was a very good present to give to my lady. And it's, 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 it's me with demon horns. So, you know, it's, it's dope. Yep. So I'm gonna have to show that uh, yeah, next week. Sure next week. Yeah. So okay. you guys can see that, you know, you know, sure. The, the, the yeah. good, the good Bryant twin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goes her way around, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, on that note, it was such a nice, it was such a nice direction that we were going today. And then Travis had to pull out the demon horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't get around to engineering, but we had a really good discussion today anyway. And I think both Bryant twins are really good people. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. You're That's welcome. why Chuck's my favorite. I mean, <laughs> after my twin sister, but you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and besides, uh, and besides, uh, and besides Chuck, I, I, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, to have the, 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 the tech, tech newbie and actually lead that discussion is probably a good idea. So, you know, waiting until L train gets back. Next yeah. Week, yeah. We should let L train get back. Cause you know, he can go yeah. deep into engineering. He's actually busy being an engineer right now. He's training his young engineer to, to like mm. make robots. And so mm. it's a worthy cause. Mm. Shout out, to, uh, shout out to Leon who couldn't be here today. Yeah. Shout out to Leon. And again, shout out to digital click. Cause digital click always drops our really nice overlays and they give us all our graphics for y'all that don't know all the sexy artwork is not done by Ryan or Sheree, even though they could probably potentially do it, but digital click always has sexy artwork with for us and thank them for coming through for the tech Nubian teams. If you want to learn more about tech Nubians, www.technubians.com. That's T E C H. H N zero zero B I N S dot com. Uh, please follow us here on Twitch. If you like our vibe and want to learn more about game development, you can hit us up in our socials. Uh, you can look us up on technubians.com. We're there, of course. And if you really like our channel, subscribe to our channel. If you got Amazon yeah. Prime, you got Prime Gaming, subscribe to the channel. We should be the one you should subscribe to it. It helps us out a lot when it means a lot to us. And we thank you for that. Correct. Also, please follow us on our socials. Like I said before, search the Tech Nubians on all the major platforms. They be on Twit I'm Twitter. They be on Instagram. They're there. You know, all the pictures are appropriate on Instagram. Don't worry. Uh, uh, <laughs> make sure <laughs> I'm the, you know, I was talking about you. You knew I was talking about Maybe. you. You know, I was talking about you. <laughs> Uh, also, check out our schedule of shows for on TGN here on our Twitch page. Tonight, we have Pod Squadron. Tomorrow, we have Nerd Tastics. We hope to see you next week. Peace.